I thought today we'd go over the tanks, how my room has changed, because it has changed a little bit since the last time we talked. Uh, there's a different air system in here, some different filtration. Let's go over everything that we've done in the shrimp room and how we're going to go forward for 2021. Alright guys, normally I do start at the other side of the room and uh, we look at the open oil and stuff. I thought today we'd look at the calcio first. Um, I will have macro footage up here for you guys so you can see. Uh, this tank is uh, 50 litres, 10% water change every week. I write the water change dates and stuff on the tank. There's the start date of the tank. I suggest you guys do it as well so you know when to change the soil. Either that or you can uh, use a pH meter to uh, tell you when the pH is done. Alright, so these guys are doing awesome. They had lots of babies. You can see they're quite active. That's what the tank looks like from distance. Maybe we should switch off this light up here. Let's do that. Let's switch it off. And because we're over here, we may as well start over here as well then. Right, so this rack is pretty much the same. Opa'ulai are doing really, really well actually. Um, not feeding them at all has made such a huge difference. I fed them today just so to get them to come to the front, but uh, normally I feed this tank like once a week now, and that's it. No water changes at all. This tank is 60 litres. Uh, Solani is, what, 1.015, something like that. Guys, I'm, I can't remember exactly. Something like that. I use a, a refractometer to get the water Solani uh, to exactly what these shrimp need, right? So, these guys have had bazillions of babies. I want to make this kind of quick today, guys, because uh, I know you guys will get a little bit bored of it. Sulawesi tank is uh, doing quite well as well. I'm trying something different to try and get more algae on this side, which I'll tell you guys in a later video. But, uh, but it seems to be working so far. You can see all the Sulawesi here, all up in the rocks and stuff. These guys have had loads and loads of babies, and they were staying small. So we're uh, trying something different. As I said, I'll try and make a video about it once I know for sure that it's working. You can kind of see here. I want the tank to be greener than it is faster. Look at that microfauna. Isn't it awesome? Cardinal Sulawesi tank. Uh, it is filtered by one air filter now. We'll talk about that in a second, why I've switched from air filters to from Pat Minis, because uh, you guys would like to know about that too. Blue Dream Tank. It looks a little bit of a mess, but I actually do clean this every single week. It gets 25% water change. This tank is the only tank in the room where I'm uh, doing a slightly bigger water change because I want to see the effect it has on the shrimp to see if... Uh, they have more babies. I can see babies in here flying around because I do notice with uh, with uh, Neocaridina that they do slow down in, with breeding if you do less water changes, right? So I'm going for bigger water changes. So far so good. This tank was hard culled a few months back and uh, it's mostly all Blue Dreams now. Very, very, very good. Green Jades, again, same thing again. The tank has had its part mini filter removed. I'll go over that, guys, in another video as well. I don't want to flood this video with information that's not really relevant to the thing, the video. Right, so these guys are doing quite well as well. As I said, I want to make this quick, fast, New Year's video. Look at how green this tank is. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh, look at it. These guys have had quite a lot of babies too. These are Santa grade uh, Super Crystal Reds. You can see I'm going with the theme here. I want more and more plants in my tanks. Blue Boltus, looking really good, double air, filter, double air filters even. Christmas Moss is doing awesome. Peter is going to get some of this very soon. Peter. Uh, King Kong tank slash golden bee. Uh, this tank, they've, they've recently had babies in here, so uh, we know we're on the right track with this tank. Uh, this is going to be a mixed bee tank. You can see them here. I put some food in here. You can actually see one or two of the little babies here as well. You can just see them every so often moving. But these guys, I think they were born just this week. So it will be a little while before we see them properly in the tank. As I said, guys, I'll overlay some macro footage on this tank for you so you can see. In my bigger tank specifically, um, I'm not doing away with these hop filters because I quite like them. I quite like how slow they they dribble into the tanks. Again, removal of the pot mini, more air into the tanks. 
seems to be working well. Now that we're talking about air, let's have a little look up the way. We have a new air system in here. I did have one like this before, but it just wasn't very professionally made. Talking about professionally made drilling holes a little bit too big and covering them up with duct tape. These are the stainless steel little valves, air valves as well. It's not the plastic ones. Plastic ones are okay for um, being on airlines like you see over here or when you're drip acclimating, but they're not really that great for um, an air system like this because they, they leak too much air basically, right? So over a whole shrimp rim, if you use the plastic ones, you could be losing a ton of air, right? So these are on uh, all of the tanks and you can see it goes all the way across my shrimp rim. I even have it in my arrow bucket. This is something we can talk about here as well. Uh, my reverse osmosis water, when I'm doing my water changes, I'm actually separating my pure RO uh, when I need it into this tank here. This tub, this used to be my old reservoir. I thought I'd start using it again because um, I actually do need to top up my tanks by about this much every single week, right? So this is about 25 litres, so it doesn't make sense for me to keep on emptying this big barrel to try and clean it to get pure water in here when I can just put it in a separate container then mix all my salts and stuff in this one. Two separate containers, clean water, mixing water. Look at these, look at the calcio. Look at all the babies. Love these shrimp. They're way, way, way better than I thought they were going to look when I first got them. Way better. Again, this tank here, guys, is uh, air. Air driven. Wow. Look at these. Super, no super crystals, but they are kind of super, but they're still just your normal variant of crystals. Whoop, whoop. These guys are, guys are doing very, very well. These are um, the only tanks in the room where I haven't changed out the pot minis. And it's for a reason, because um, I, I can't think of a way to change out these pot minis with a filter that's on there to make them air driven. Not yet. Right, so they're still in there. Uh, crystal red shrimp tank plants are doing awesome I think that's quite important guys you, you learn how to read a tank and you can see if uh, like for example I think I did mention in one of my streams that this moss was a little bit yellow so we added a little bit of fertilizer just a tiny little amount every single week one third dose plants are coming along really really coolly really really nicely I've actually been adding some uh, what are these called? Crypts to the tank as well. Can't remember the n exact name of this one. It's Nan Nari, something like that. I've been adding some of them to the tanks just to add more plants. You won't really see much in this tank because these are uh, what are they called? Missouri crowns. I swear to God, guys, all these fellas here are boys. Not a single girl in here. We did have one girl in here, but I moved her to another tank. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this one. This I think we might uh, make this overflow for the Galaxy tank. That is a good indication how how well the breeding in that tank is going. I'm actually going to have to have an overflow tank for them over here. Again, plants doing amazingly good. Red root floaters. This is what you want them to look like. Red. This tank I have Salvini. See the difference? Looks very, very nice. Look at the roots. Look at the difference in the roots. Very nice. Um... This is the black tiger, fancy black tigers. They've had a bunch of babies as well. I have noticed in this tank, guys, that the, the babies that they're having are all different. I'm seeing ones in here that look like them, ones that are red, ones that are black. I'm seeing goldens. Um, I'm seeing ones that look like orange eye blue tigers as well. So I don't know if that's ever been in these guys' crossings, which it, it probably has been has been. I've been tidying up this little tank as well because I do notice there's quite a, a lot of babies on the side glass and I want to try and get these guys back to what they were. Again, remove the part mini. Looking good. This tank still does have the part minis but it's for a reason. Um, in my bigger tanks I will keep the part minis because they're good for circulation. Lots and lots of snails in this one. Marissa snails everywhere. Lots of pink fire reds. Tank is uh, 
doing good. It probably needs the glass cleaned at the front. This one gets a 25% water change a week. As I said, I, I think I actually mentioned that I only do 25% water changes in that blue dream. What I meant to say, guys, is I do 25% water changes in my Neo Caradina tanks. 5% in these tanks. The soft water shrimp get only 5%. Put the babies in that f sponge. Right, so all the breeding is uh, going to plan, as they say. Let's have a little look over here. Cold tub I can't show you because it is overgrown. You could probably just see a little... Maybe you can, just through the glare right in the centre. A little baby cray cray right there. Um, the reason I'm putting so much plants in here, guys, is because the crayfish actually eat all of the stuff I put in here. It's a good place for the overflow to go for eating all the junk in all the other tanks, if that makes sense. I was tidying up this tank a little bit yesterday. We're doing some work with it. I want to get this one back to its former glory. So I've removed a lot of the algae that was in here. I was just building up. This is just a cherry tank. Now this one here, guys, the next one, looks empty. right? But trust me, there is uh, pandas in here. There's three of them. Um, they are a male and a female. These came from a batch where the, 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 the entire bag was almost dead when I got it. Um, at least half the bag was dead, right? So um, I had a lot of losses in this tank. Whenever you have um, a bag of shrimp where the water is just, it's like pink or red, you know you're going to be, you, know, you just know you're going to have issues, right? So I lost quite a few of the shrimp in that bag. Um, I don't blame the guy that sent me them because it is just a risk. You get one, I mean, it, the guy can't predict if a shrimp is going to die, right? So, um, you know, it is what it is. Good news is, though, guys, the girl in here is buried and she's been buried for a little while. So we're hoping for baby shrimp and out of her very, very soon. Again, these are the pot mini filters in here. Some of them have changed. I think I have, guys, in total, like seven left to remove from my tanks, right? So we have already removed something like 15 out of my tanks. I have a bucket full of pot mini somewhere. These are the, the tangerine tigers. And they've actually taken the food and went away to the back on the side. But this tank has had a little bit of uh, change in the way it looks. Now, this is actually a harder water tank, but we've put some... Uh, what soil was this? This was... Uh, I don't know if it was idea powder, I think. On the bottom, just to give the tank a little bit of darkness near the front, because uh, shrimp are tangerine tigers are much better looking on this dark substrate. German spotted head pintos are the red ones. Again, these guys have had babies as well. You could probably just make the bit of a go to the corner here. We'll also have macro footage. Um, uh, this tank is what it is. I'm trying to think if there's anything better I could do in here. None of the adults have died. They've had batch after batch of babies. You can see them on the bottom here. But it is very still, right? So this was one of the ones that we changed over to the sponge filter as well. Uh, this was one of the problem tanks, if you were familiar with it from one of my streams. It is now... I think it's fixed because uh, I counted seven or eight babies in here yesterday wandering around, so... It's all good. You guys, again, will see that in some macro footage. I'm going to save the best of last, so we're going to skip this tank. <laughs> we're going to go over here. This is the mixed pintos. You can see they have babies as well. Lovely, lovely little shrimp. Big mama there grabbing all that food. Now these guys, uh, this the, you would have seen the video on this a few weeks ago where it was like a problem tank. We did a slightly bigger water change. That's what I suggest you guys do. If you have issues, is do a slightly bigger water change. Uh, but again, make sure you drip it into the tank. Guys, by the way, guys, while we're talking about this, I will do a separate video on this, but um, on lots of tanks you have this wider rim. This will be useful for people that have float valves like this. Float valve, if you have a float valve set up, I like to do them manually, so I have my float valve set up like this, where I can attach it via my RO system here. To the float valve and then um, put it on the side of the tank like this here right see how thin this is lots of my tanks are much much wider than, than like this right and those float valves simply do not fit on here 
But look what I found that works. Get one of these clamps, adjustable clamps, and uh, you put it over the edge, like this. Maybe be a little bit hard to do with one hand, put it over the edge. Make sure it's tight. Make sure it's tight. And look at that, hey presto, it gives you a platform to put your little float valve onto. It's very, very stable, look at it. And this will fit, guys, on any tank that is that wide. So this will fit any tank, right? There's no glass in the world that is this wide unless you're in some kind of deep sea world. Right, but I thought that was a cool little thing. I might do a video on this separately just to show you me doing a water change kind of thing. But I have one, two, three, four, five different tanks in this room where um, I think that would be a very, very good thing for me to use this thing, right? So it saves you having to mess around doing other things. Other tanks, what else do we have? Uh, you saw them, we're going to leave them to last. This tank has had a little bit of a cleanup because I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, it's not doing as well as it should be. I do see babies in here, I can see a baby right there on that little uh, alder cone. It's a new one actually, you can see more with another baby there. But they're not like, there's no explosion in this tank and they're, they are having batch after batch of uh, shrimp in here but I'm just not seeing a really high survival rate so this was one of the tanks that I've started doing 25% water changes in it to uh, just freshen it up a little bit see if that makes any kind of difference I do I know for sure that it will because it's worked in my other tanks these are uh, the red fancy tigers Red fancy tigers I do know this GoPro is not the greatest for zooming in but again guys this one had a nice little clean it. Um, all the algae that was in here, you've seen it in previous videos, has more or less disappeared. You can see some babies in there. Lovely moss here, right? So I put this moss center because I want this to grow the biggest. As, as you can see here, we're adding more crypts to the tanks, more crypts to the back. Subwasser tang, little bambino in that filter, if you can see past the glare. I hate the glare on that side, a beautiful mama at the back there. Looks like she just molted another baby there. A tiny little baby on that leaf there. But yeah, another baby over there. There's not bazillions of babies, guys. And these guys have been in here for, what, three, three months at least. So I would have expected to see more babies in this tank than there is. They seem to all be congregating over this side. And to give you an example, guys, of what the tank should be like, we're going to look at the tank below. Ta-da! This is my Galaxy tank, and it's doing really, really well to the point where um, just counting the babies that are into the hundreds, see them all over here, look, all over the place. Uh, and the awesome thing, guys, is when I do count them, because I do, I come in here and I count them, because it's just a thing I do, I come in and I look through my magnifying glass, or look at you, um, and I look for baby shrimp. Every single day I come in here and I look for more and more baby shrimp. And uh, th this tank yesterday had a lot of newborns in it as well. But you can see there's a lot of shrimp that are almost one centimeter. So this tank is doing really, really good. So we're going to follow the, the way that we're doing this tank to the tank above. Look at all these pintos. Alright, so let me see. Can we use this magnifying glass as a sort of Mark Shrimp Tanks hack to show you some things? Some galaxies, some with blue, lots of babies. Bambino shrimp. There's a lot of bolts in here because this is what you get when you cross uh, galaxies with bolts and stuff. More bolts is probably how these specific types of uh, galaxy were made. Look at this girl. Oh! Yep, 2021. I'm still using a magnifying glass to show you stuff. We could use the macro camera, but hey, things have got to change every so often. Right, so, oh, look at that girl at the back on the leaf. You guys probably can't make her, but she, she probably is the best shrimp in the tank. She is a galaxy uh, fishbone, but she has uh, an awful lot of blue in her, right? So, if anything, this shrimp here will be the one that we might be able to get some boa from eventually, right? But right now, she's a fishbone. And how that works, guys, is uh, galaxies 
Pintos are the ones with just the stripes going across the back. Fish bones are the ones that look like an actual skeleton going on the back. Right, so the one here is a, is a, would be a fish bone. You see how it has the back line. This one also has the back line, but it's not as prominent. So this one would be. Now this one has enough of a back line to be called a uh, uh, fish bone. Right, but you see the back line? The more the back line covers the back of the body, you want it going down at least half, then it becomes a boa, especially when it has the, the blue in it. The one at the back has this. Look at all the babies in the filters. All over the place. Filters, babies, filters, babies. Right, so... Um, yeah, things are going in the right direction. Again, this tank had all the part minis removed. I'm kind of loving uh, this little bit of extra flow. You can see all the tiny bubbles floating around in the tank. I didn't have that, guys, with the part minis in here. Because you, you have to turn the part minis down so, so low uh, to stop them uh, churning up the tank kind of thing. Especially in the small tanks. This one's not so bad, but I did it in this one as well. Um, you have to turn them down so low to get um, so the flow isn't so strong. Uh, the, the bubbles in them more or less stop. Now here's a good example. You can see the flow. This is on full, uh, and and little tanks like this up here will be more saturated with oxygen because the the bubbles are actually going past. Uh, how would I describe this? They're breaking the surface layer within the bubble to to do the oxygen exchange rate so you can visibly see it here with the billions of little bubbles you can see all the little bubbles floating on the top that is what you want these are of course the red uh, king kongs i'm surprised i don't see any babies actually because there was uh, lots of babies here yesterday where did the food go let's move why there's no babies at the front bambinos where did you go oh here's the girl here pride and joy Oh, isn't she beautiful, guys? Hopefully we can get past that lovely glare. It's my pride and joy. She's beautiful. Right, so you can see in the back, you see the fish bone, the, the little uh, like teeth things in the back that point down the way. Once that merges, this girl would be a, a galaxy boa once she gets to that grade. But I don't think this she's ever going to be that grade because... Uh, her pattern doesn't show it yet. Here is a good example of just what a normal um, pinto would look like. Fishbone pinto. You see it has a little bit of blue, but this, this one's blue is like a lot. So I would say this one has the boa genetics. Looking good, guys. I think that probably covers it for today. Shall we get the video done in one take? I think so. Thank you guys for watching. Have an awesome new year. Hope you love my Norwegian style double layered llama oh, llama fleeced jumper. It's like mega hot. This thing is honestly double layered in the, in the shrimp room and it's mega warm. Anyway guys, have an awesome day and I'll catch you all in the next one. Happy shrimp keeping.